Before the video starts, make sure to hit the link in my bio for the new Everyday Design Style Volume 1, which changes the whole feel and look of text and logo with one simple click. This file also comes with a free PSD for you to check out and see the asset in use itself. It's currently on sale as well as the Oasis Planet asset so you can start making streetwear designs today with one easy click. Hey guys, it's Wilson, also known as Design by Will, and in today's video we're going to be designing a Y2K vintage graphic. Now we're not designing Y2K logos, which is what you guys probably have seen all over Instagram, Pinterest, any social media platform. When you hear Y2K, you think of these type of logos. Now we're going to be designing Y2K around the feel and the theme that it's based on, which in my personal belief, it's early or late 90s early 2000s what futuristic stuff would have looked like in their point of view um so that's what we're going to be designing um most of it really consists of a lot of gradients a lot of um overblown highlights and a lot of use of female characters as well as very futuristic very streamlined designed types and fonts so we're just going to be grabbing our pen tool once we got our images um and cutting this lady now we're not going to make this perfect because we're going to be putting a bunch of effects on this but at least make it decent and take your time and this is a great way to you learn the pen tool for when you're making graphics in illustrator as well as photoshop so i really encourage using the pen tool to cut out objects and things now i've got this third image of the road of unsplash just because i didn't want to place the woman and the the woman in the car in an empty white space because it's harder to make shadows look perfect in an empty space because you need to take into account every little detail but when you do a shadow on a dark background you don't have to worry about it too much um we're just gonna play around. said add in some shadows to the bottom make it look like it's meant to be there now that we got it somewhat what we want it to look like um we can just move on to the next step which is actually designing our typeface now for our typeface i'm going to be using this unique so magical type effect it's called a clipping mask now if you guys haven't heard of that you need to go back and watch a beginner's tutorial on illustrator and photoshop basically we're just going to get some type use a clipping mask to build a shape around that type using envelope distort so basically you just want to grab your type and you want to convert that into a smart object or the term would be expanding the text that's an illustrated term and then you just want to basically cut out your circle into different segments and then select the letter that you want and click the segment that you want and then go to um, object at the bottom envelope distort and then it should automatically clip into place and that's how you do the effect it's very simple and I'm just speeding past it because it's very quick after you've done that you just want to expand the shape and then copy and paste it into your Photoshop file and you should have a complete design there now to be honest I was rushing when I did that um, if you're doing this for take your time and make sure all the letters still look somewhat correct just because that O looks sort of like a D and I don't really like that if I were to go back I would spend more time cutting out the objects so they flow towards the letter shape rather than just mesh into the letter shape if you know what I mean now things we're just gonna go into the filter gallery and we're just gonna play with some effects now you guys can always pause and just copy what I'm doing but I'm just gonna talk above this right now basically I just want the highlights to stand out so once I do cylinder pick a very distinct color against the black and white which is orange to highlight my highlights on the model itself and I'm gonna apply those same filters onto the car just so when I apply another filter on top and I'm editing the high points, it's gonna to go towards that very prominent color orange. So it looks like I'm editing a whole image rather than individual little sections where people go wrong. Go through my Everyday Design Style Volume 1. It's a range of different styles. Now, the one that I go for is called Mall, 
which is actually influenced by another graphic designer. I forgot his IG handle. I just pop it up right here. And it's very classic, very easy to use style. Um, and it's very easy to implement into your designs once you have them. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. I'm just going to use this one just because it's black and white. And it also suits the theme that I'm going for, which is that Y2K vintage style. Now, it doesn't look too hazy, but you can see how it looks kind of frosty within the font um, and that logo space. That's what I want to replicate. Uh, that's what I want to reproduce throughout the whole image itself. So I picked that style because it's something that I want to reproduce throughout the whole design and it just ties everything in together. Did some of the bottom part using a mask and using a black brush. I'm just going to go in and add a gradient map. Now I'm going to be using the map pack 49 for this and gradient maps are perfect for bringing elements together. Lighting, ha lighting, highlights and shadows are the way you make things blend. So using a gradient map, you essentially just completely change all those scopes. You change the highlights, you change the shadows um, using these gradient maps, which is perfect. Um, and I'm just going to go for a little simple one. I'm just clicking through all of them to ensure that I don't miss one and miss a certain look. Like I really like this purple type feel, um, but I also really like the green and the classic orange and red. Now I won't go for orange and red for the final look because I always use all orange or red in my designs and it's getting kind of annoying. So I'm going to go for something a little bit more opposite. Obviously, I'm going to use the gradient map pack as a base and then just add a different color, which is what I recommend for everybody. Get the assets and then make them your own. I always tell people that get the assets, make them your own. You don't always have to stick to what the asset is like. You can always just use a part of the asset and then completely change it or even add little elements to turn it into your own visual style came up with in terms of the gradients but I am just going to turn that off for a little bit and I'm going to be adding some more elements into the design the reason why I like doing that is because I can see the whole design scope and understand what everything is looking like before I make it look pretty so if it looks ugly in the ugly stage you still need to make some adjustment you still might need to make some adjustments but if it looks somewhat decent in the ugly phase then you're on the right path I know that makes zero sense. Wilson, if you just got these little elements from my Oasis Planet Pack, um, I'm pretty sure it's always, it's all it's also in the Oasis Stars Pack. The Oasis Planet Pack is just a little bit more elements and it's more expanded in terms of what I have in there. And all the objects are expanded, unlike the Oasis Star Pack, which are all still the raw lines, which allows people to edit it themselves. And that's what I wanted to implicate. In the Oasis Planet Pack, everything's expanded, so it's just the shape itself. You can't really go in and edit the shape, unlike the Oasis Star Pack, um, which is kind of a downfall, but I just wanted people to have more of an easier experience with the Oasis Planet Pack. Like, all you have to do is just add them in. Oasis Star Pack, you get to edit the outline, the strokes and everything, and you get to make it your own. And basically, now, I'm just trying what it will look like with certain um, styles on top of it. Like I said, this uh, style pack, all you have to do is click to add. And it's really easy to edit because you can just go back by double clicking onto your um, smart object and just going to blending options, styles, and clicking down and changing the style, obviously. Now I'm making the same as the main text or the main logo, uh, just so you can have that more 3d edge to it because that flat style doesn't look really nice in terms of the flat background i want these styles to kind of stand out a little bit now that we basically have our design complete i'm just going to add a new an adjustment layer and it's going to be the curves just to deepen the colors a little bit more um, just because i feel like it looks better when the colors are a little bit deeper um, and i also did add a gradient um not a gradient overlay more so like a gradient stroke or drop shadow to my final design and then i changed that color to the teal color that's going on in the main shadows 
Now, remember when I told you guys about the highlights using the orange? You can see how it's completely faded out, but it's completely blown out her face because I wanted that effect. Like, I wanted the highlights to really stand out, like I said before. And you can see it here in her face and also on the car where there were certain highlights. You can see how it's been blown out, which is perfect. Now, yeah, the design is basically done. We're just going to add it to this simple t-shirt mock-up and put it on there. It's going to be a more so graphic towards the lower torso of the body, but it's going to be centered. And I want this graphic to take up the whole area. Now, I always play with placements when it comes to graphic, but I always like to keep it safe and play it safe. Um, and yeah, that's the whole design. If you guys liked it, let me know in the comments. For rating on this one, I'll give this one a solid 10 out of 10. I think this graphic is actually banging on and it looks pretty sick and it would be dope on even a hoodie or full zip up even. So yeah, actually, if you guys want this graphic, hit me up in my emails and I'll make sure to get in contact with you. And yeah, that's it. Let me know what you guys thought. And don't forget to check out all the assets used in this video is in the link in the description so you guys can follow along and make some sick streetwear for your brand. It's been designed by Will and I'll see you guys when I see you. And follow me on all my socials and TikTok. Bye bye.